Uh, good morning and thank you very much for joining us this morning. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm uh, Marie Cheng, so I'm the Partnerships Manager here at My HR Toolkit. Um, so we've been running quite a number of series of uh, webinars um, since the start of the year, which has been really popular. Um, in January, we started a series of webinars which were predominantly aimed at the SME and the HR professional. Um, and so far, we've had quite a lot of different topics, such as like running engaging webinars, um, why social media is really important for your business, how to optimize SEO. Um, and today, what we're going to be looking at is how we can use some of the review websites to get some great reviews for your consultancy. Um, and I'm joined by our social media exec, um, Hannah Wieser, and uh, she'll, she'll introduce herself in a bit shortly, who will be hosting this. Um, so again, for those people who've joined us before, we're following a very similar format in terms of the webinar. Han Hannah will spend about 25, 30 minutes covering the main part of the slide deck and content. And then at the end, we will have some time to answer some of your questions. So please uh, do throughout the webinar. Um, if you've got any questions, there's a little Q&A box at the bottom of the screen um, that you can kind of add your questions onto there. So feel free to add them as we go. Um, also, uh, there's a Zoom chat, so get involved in the chat, asking questions, uh, just in the Kino box, just so that we don't miss them. Um, and also just find a little bit of housekeeping that obviously today's session is just gen general tips and best practice and general advice. Um, so that's obviously from the viewpoint of, of Hannah when she's come across doing reviews as part of her work. Um, and then finally, just to mention that our next webinar is um, around networking the new normal. So actually a few weeks ago, I, I was quite to join a virtual networking session which was actually really interesting um, so we've got someone coming to talk to us about um, some virtual networking tips if you would like to either join a network a virtual networking session or run your own networking session and what i'll do during the course of the webinar is add a link to the registration page in the chat okay so that's the intro then so here uh, this morning to talk about how to get great reviews for your consultancy is Hannah uh, and I'll let Hannah introduce herself and I'll let Hannah also screen share so she can probably rectify what I've been doing on, on, on my on my screen so Hannah over over to you good morning everyone I hope you can all hear and see me okay um Marie if you could just let me share the screen I will um share my screen now so thank you all for coming this morning um, and without further ado, I will start the presentation. Um, so I hope everyone can see the screen. Um, and this morning we're gonna talk about how to get great reviews for your consultancy. Um, and I'll be going through today's webinar um, and I'm a social media and digital marketing executive at my HR toolkit and gaining and sustaining reviews um, is part of my role at toolkit. Um, so we'll go through today. There we go. <laughs> um, so today we're going to go through the importance of reviews for growing businesses, uh, different types of reviews, the different platforms to use to get reviews, and also the best tactics and approaches to get reviews. So before we do start the webinar today, as if you've attended other ones, we do love to run a quick poll. Um, so Marie will get that out to you all now. And all this will just indicate is two questions. So it'd be really great to gauge how often you reviews. Uh, you use reviews um, so how often do you read reviews before purchasing a product or service there's three options there for you to choose from um, and would you um, would a positive or negative review change your decision to purchase a product or service so it's really great to um, gauge your results and Marie will let us know the um, results from this poll we'll just wait a few minutes for them to come through Great. Um, so the re results from that poll is 67% of people um, often look at reviews before purchasing a product or service and 33% said sometimes, but none of us have said never. Um, and 67% of people said that a positive or negative review would change your, per your decision to purchase a product or service and 33% of us said maybe. So that's really interesting and it is a really high importance um, in today's society and the way that we do business is getting and maintaining reviews for our customers as well as our clients, anyone else our business comes uh, into face with. So a statistical report found that 
in 2021, 94% of customers are more likely to purchase a product or service that has a positive review, which is really interesting. And 79% of customers now trust online reviews just as much as they trust personal recommendations from their friends and family. So that's a really stagnant statistic really 79% is a huge amount um, and Statista has found that over the years that number is actually increasing um, as a lot of online uh, review sites are getting a lot more credibility for themselves so it's really interesting and it does highlight the importance of gaining and creating re great reviews for your business or consultancy um, so as well as indicating that we're just going to run through some importance um, and put the importance of reviews so Reviews are a great way to create a form of social proof, which is essentially, if anyone's ever heard of the term social proof, is um, displaying to your customers or your wider business what exactly it is exactly that you do and just sort of having a bit of a testimonial for that, um, sort of reaping what you sow. And it helps create credibility and trust for businesses either growing or starting out. It can help as well to build a positive brand reputation. It's something that businesses strive for is creating a positive brand reputation and it can take a long duration to actually create that, but building reviews for your business helps that quicken up a lot more. Um, it also helps to streamline customer decision-making. It's like that statistic report found, um, it can actually influence the way that people um, purchase products. And if you're kind of trying to create more business for new customers that you're trying to bring on new clients um, or new consultants, it can actually help people get to that decision of purchasing your product or service a lot quicker. And it, had, and it can help increase your brand awareness with search engine optimization. So we're going to touch a little bit on search engine optimization in terms of reviews today. But what Marie will do is uh, put in a chat a webinar we've done previously on using SEO for your business um, by our SEO expert Camille in my HR toolkit. Um, so that's a really great topic to have a look at if you are wanting to build your brand awareness through SEO. And finally, um, Reviews can help businesses change and adapt and improve in response to honest feedback. So online reviews especially are a place where customers or clients do have a bit of comfort in being honest um, because it's not that face-to-face -face interaction. And um, if it is negative feedback that is commonly, commonly occurs with any business, it, as a business or a manager, you can really look into that review uh, there might be something there that you didn't realize about your business or something that you can improve on and it gives you the opportunity to actually adapt and change your business uh, as a response to that so although a negative review at the start of it may be a bit negative it can have a lot of benefits in the long run for businesses there's the importance of reviews and now we're going to touch on just three different types of reviews um, some are commonly well known and some of them aren't as much um, so the first type of review is word of mouth which essentially is uh, a recommendation normally coming from a direct conversation with a member of your family or a friend um, and it happens really organically it's very hard to um, change on a business perspective um, but if you can uh, gauge what your word of mouth is if a customer comes on and says that you have they've been recommended from a friend or family member uh, do try find that out and just gauge if you have got a good word of mouth presence um, so that's one type of review a second type of review is online reviews which will be more focused on today uh, online reviews can be for and you can gather them from many online sites uh, we'll go on to two today that's focused on consultants but Online reviews has got a massive uh, importance for customers. They're really great for customers to use, to shop around, uh, to understand the what options they have and to also get the best business or consultancy that's suited towards them. So online reviews are really important. And the third one that we will touch on today is images. So images, you don't, doesn't shout at you to be a type of review, but it can really be a great way to visualize your product or service. Um, in a form of an image so this may be a, a screenshot of a call as we're in lockdown um, of a company that you are doing consultancy work with 
Um, this could be an image of you networking or an image of your team. Um, it can just be some sort of visual testimonial that can display your work or your relationships, um, as well as displaying your business and brand identity a bit. So images, they can vary from business to business, but if you can find images as a form of displaying your, your social proof, they can be really fantastic. So there's the three different types of reviews to think about. Um, in terms of the different platforms to get reviews, there are so many options out there. Um, some review sites are trusted more than others. So we're going to touch on the two, well, the three different types of reviews and platforms. So the three we're going to touch on today is Google My Business, Trustpilot, and the use of social media and how that plays into gathering and also displaying reviews. Um, you may want to consider as well other type of review sites. So we've got Amazon, TripAdvisor, Witch and Glassdoor. Uh, so Amazon is a product, if you've got a product out there, Amazon's a great place to display that and gain um, a lot of reviews quickly for a physical, tangible product. Uh, TripAdvisor is a review site if you have got events or exhibitions on uh, a lot from a company perspective. Uh, people can go online and review your, their experience. Um, which is has an array of different products or services specifically for reviews. And Glassdoor is probably out of the four, one that um, may apply to more consultancies. Um, Glassdoor is a review site that reviews the experience that an employee or a client or a consultant um, gets for their experience with working with or working internally with that company. So do set up a Glassdoor account if that, if that does apply to you. Uh, there may already be reviews on your Glassdoor sites so that's worth having a look at. Um, and it's just great as well to gauge how your client or employee, previous employee or current, uh, finds the experience of working directly with you. And what my tip is, is if any of the other Amazon TripAdvisor Glassdoor, which apply to you, um, or Google My Business Trustpilot and social media are more suited to you, just try choose one or two places to always direct people with reviews, uh, simply because it's great to have one place to gather them and to boost your overall rating uh, and if you are sending people left right and center to all these different sites you might not gather a really credible review for all of them together um, but what we'll touch on today is google my business trust pilot and social media in terms of choosing the right one and just knowing the benefits of them so google my business is a very commonly used uh, review site um, that people can set up for free and it's through Google. So a lot of people may not uh, understand what Google My Business is, and that's absolutely fine. Um, I didn't myself until about a year ago. But Google My Business is, when you go onto Google Chrome, you search for my HR Toolkit in this example, there will be on the right-hand side of the screen a, a rectangular object like you can see here uh, that highlights the business specifically. It's a bit of a free advert, I like to say, um, as it gives you customs information about your website, directions, um, and also the review section here. So it's very easy to find a business when you're searching for them directly um, through Google My Business. So Google My Business is great because it improves the visibility of your website and the review section organically and for free. Um, so if people are searching for you directly, they can find your site with that little advertisement on the right hand side of the screen. So that's really powerful and also cost beneficial. Um, and the more reviews you get, the more uh, organically promoted your business will be. It can also increase your local SEO, which is something that Camille has talked about in our previous webinar. Um, but what I'll do is I'll just press this on the screen here. And this is a really great example of how it can prove your local SEO. So we've typed in here HR consultants in Sheffield. And what I will do is all of these sites listed here will be businesses that have set up their Google My Business um, account. And if I was a business looking for a HR consultant in the Sheffield area, that would be my first search. And it would give you a really great and unique opportunity to target your customer straight away. So we've got this one here, Topaz HR Services or Ser Serenity. Um, so Serenity, they've got a few 
good reviews but these two pop up first because they've got a good rating or good uh, review section already so if you are wanting to find clients or businesses in a certain location i would recommend using google my business to so set up and also gather a lot of reviews on google my business because it can really improve um, your local customers so the only tip with that is to realize that with a google my business account if you are a customer wanting to leave a review on that account um you have to have a gmail email address or a google my business a google um account set up to leave a google review so with that um if a customer doesn't have a gmail account they may they'll have to go through a process of setting up an account so if that customer isn't that dedicated to leaving you a review it is likely that they might um not set up the account and just sort of bin it off because it, it's a slightly bit more effort although it only takes two minutes so just do realize that if you've got a committed customer that doesn't have a gmail account but does really want to leave you a review then they will go through that process of setting up an account to leave that review uh, but it's a tip if you are directing people to leave you a google my business um, review so to actually set up a Google My Business account, simply search for Google My Business on any search engine um, or type in www.google.business.com. Uh, it will give you a form to fill out. Uh, this will include just general details and it will also include a business address. So as a Google My Business account needs a, it needs a business address in order to verify that you are official business um, within the UK or abroad. Um, what will happen once you've registered is Google will send you a postcard with a verification code on it to that address. So that's the only thing to bear in mind, especially as we're in lockdown, if you've got access to your business address um, at this time, do make sure you're aware of that. Um, and all you need to do is log in to your Google account that you've set up and type in that verification code the google my business will verify that you are an official business you are where you've said you're um, located and it will set up that google my business account another tip to bear in mind is to fill out as much as information as possible to improve your local seo it's just one thing that google um, really really likes when businesses fill out as much information as possible so within any field i would recommend uh, filling it out uh, the more you do the more organically you'll be promoted by the site and google my business can take up to 60 days to re-update any key information so they do prioritize uh, if you're changing your your timings that you're open or if you're changing uh, your website address but any small details that you need to update on your google my business account it can take up to 60 days so do bear that in mind if you are ever editing information on google my business okay so the second um review site that's really great to get involved in and also direct customers to is trustpilot so trustpilot's a really common and well used uh, online review site it's really highly trusted by customers especially in the uk as well um, it is used mainly from a customer perspective um, for B2B relationships. Um, as not, it's not really orientated towards specific products, um, but actually um, towards businesses too. Uh, Trustpilot can also help customers find the highest rated business within a certain category, as it has many fields on it um, that categorizes certain aspects so here's the top rated companies i think it was for um cars and motors in the, in that section so that's just an example there um it's really easy to use feature um and it can help you find a specific company so if you have a specific company in mind that you just want to check out properly before buying a product or service um a customer can search for your company and you, they'll be able to find your Trustpilot account so it is used in customer decision making to actually go on to Trustpilot and to find that company so do bear that in mind um, and also as a business perspective you can also if you're looking for a, um, a business to work with or alongside they will most likely have a Trustpilot account too 
and it is great for businesses that don't have a specific location so if you are based online or you don't have to be in a certain any type of location Trustpilot would be a the one place I'd direct my customers to and probably would recommend setting up a Google My Business account if you don't have a location specifically. But I would recommend using uh, Trustpilot to actually gather and direct uh, your uh, customers to. So how to actually set up a, a Trustpilot account. It's a lot easier than Google My Business as it doesn't involve a specific location. So you just have to search create company Trustpilot account just make sure you've got a company in there because if you just say a trust pilot account uh, it will just be towards customers or visit uk.business.trustpilot.com all you have to do here simple form to fill out the relevant information about your business and it will send an email to your business email so the tip here is to use an email that has got a your email address in so at my HR toolkit for us it would be um, simply because Trustpilot will check that that domain fits the same domain as your website so don't put in a personal work email address if you can help it um, you can still create an account but it is a slightly lengthier process um, it will just take you off to another form to further prove your identity and relationship with this business um, so that's how you would set up a Trustpilot account and moving on to social media. So social media is fantastic in terms of displaying and advertising testimonials and reviews. So you can recycle them. Um, so if you have got or have been given a review by a customer on a Trustpilot or Google My Business account, you can then make a small graphic or screenshot it and share it on your social media and it's a great way to just advertise the quality of your service and it gives you that social proof to push out to your wider audience um, so i recommend just making posts about um, the reviews on social media and what's really great about this is it gives people one a sense of credibility for your business but if in the description of that post um you put something on the lines of this is um Hannah she's left us a review um, if you want to learn more about our products or services and or leave us a review please click the link below to go to our Trustpilot account or something along the lines of that but just having that brief description of nudging people to give you a review it might just create an organic review quite easily and it, it does happen quite often um, if you're always reminding people that you've got reviews or you're trying to gain more or just nudging your customers Customers, uh, that you're connected with on social media it can quite easily um, create more reviews from just one review um, and where images in, in terms of how images are used as reviews um, and testimonials try to use social media to display them too um, as even if it's just a screenshot of that you're on a call with someone um, or a photo of you with a client you've got a really good relationship with, something along the lines of that. If you are advertising that on your social media, it gives someone a visual representation of what you like as a business, as a brand, um, and it's also a great way to show your social proof. Okay, great. So now we're going to move on to the best tactics and approaches to actually get reviews. So, my first tactic is choose your timing and also choose the person too. So consider your customer's journey. So when a customer it might be at their highest is when you really want to approach them. So consider when uh, after they've received a product or service or you've just had a catch up call with them and it went really well and they're really motivated and really thankful for your product or service. Um, it might be worth just after that leaving them, uh, dropping them a message and saying, really great call. Uh, would you mind leaving us a review about your experience with us so far? So it's really great to get at that opportunity when you know you've had a great call conversation with someone, just drop them a line whilst they're still on a bit of a high and positive feelings about your business and brand. Um, you also want to get them after they've organically provided you with a bit of feedback. So someone might have dropped you a message on LinkedIn or, or someone might have, um, just in a conversation said something really great about your business um, and in that time it says that's that's really great that's really interesting 
would you just mind uh, leaving us a review on our Google My Business or Trustpilot account with that information? It'd be really appreciated. Um, so that's one way of choosing it. Um, and also choose the customers that you've got great relationships with. Um, I do recommend choosing your timing in terms of uh, when you're not on a group call with all of your customers or it's not a mass email going out to everyone, just because some people I'm sure will appreciate your business, but some less so than others. So choose the right people to um, approach for reviews and just ask the people you've got great relationships with. Um, and also just know who to ask and who to not. Uh, the one thing to remember about reviews is that a negative review can't be taken down. Um, the only spec it can only be taken down if it's got offensive language in or if it has in, in the text some personal information or data. So you can only ask Trustpilot or Google My Business or a review site to take that review down um, under the terms that it has offensive language or personal data um, in there. So choose who to ask and who not to, just to make sure you aren't getting um, a lot of negative reviews. And what to actually say when you ask for a review. Um, I recommend just being honest, just simply saying, especially with the clients you've got and a really good re existing relationship with, just say we're trying to increase our um, our review score at the minute. It'd be really great if you can do X, Y, and Z. Um, be polite. Obviously, people are going to obviously respect that a lot more. Um, be clear and always direct them to one place. It would be great if you um, have got a Google My Business and, and a Trustpilot account, but a customer is going to be less likely to go on and leave a review on both of them. I would recommend to make sure you actually get a review out of that customer or uh, the person you've got a relationship with. Just direct them to one place unless you know they're more than happy to give you a review on multiple sites. Um, and be appreciative of their feedback. Um, make sure that you reply to the comments that they've left on your review site um, and also just drop them a line after and say thank you for leaving that just because uh, they're more likely to help you in the future or leave another one on a different site too. Um, and how to actually incentivize people to help you help you and your business on consultancy gain reviews. So one is to provide a customer competition. So this is used really largely on social media. So you could say for every person that leaves me a review, um, I'll pick one person at random to get a free consultancy call or something simple like that. It's going to incentivize your customers and your clients to give you a review. And it's just a good nudge to incentivize them. Um, another great tactic is incentivize the employees or your colleagues working within your business. Um, this is really great because a lot of people in businesses, they've got different experience with their clients or their customers. Um, and you, we've all got relationships internally with certain people externally. So you can really incentivize employees. It might be an Amazon voucher. Um, it just a small incentive for every review they get they get something from the company because it really does help the business and consultancy um i'd also remember to keep reminding people there have been a few trust uh, pilot accounts i've been on uh, that i've got a lot of reviews from 2016 or a really long time ago and no present reviews um so that's obviously been a bit of a dip in terms of uh, the reviews that they've got from the business or the way that they're incentivizing people. Um, and why that is important is if there was a business that had the same rating, uh, but more current and frequent reviews, uh, rather than that, re re the review platform that from 2016, I'm more likely to go to the business that has got frequent and regular reviews that are up to date. So make sure you keep reminding people, whether that's customers or the employees in your company. Um, and a great and final uh, great way to incentivize people is to leave a customer referral scheme. Um, so this is a great way to incentivize word of mouth reviews. So for every new customer um, that a customer recommends, they will get a free X, Y, and Z. Um, or you can just, if you've got a great relationship with them, just ask them if there are any other businesses or consultancy 
uh, clients that your business can target. Uh, and finally, I'm just going to leave you with some tips. So the goal isn't always to get a perfect score on any review sites. Um, if you had a thousand reviews and all of them are five stars, some people may be a bit suspicious because we know that businesses and humans have faults and that's completely fine. Um, so do bear that in mind. The goal isn't to get a perfect score. Um, if you, you are likely at some stage, whether um, in the near future or a long way away to get a random negative review um, and it might take down your score but just realize the goal isn't to get a perfect score and it's fine to have a 4.9 or 4.8 um, or any score that's just honest um, so that's a good tip um, another tip is to think outside the box it doesn't have to be a review on your actual product it can be a review on something that your brand gives itself so it could be a customer service um, the events that you run uh, anything that your business sort of holds on it could be a specific person um, but it's just great to think outside the box and think of different ways that you can approach people to get those reviews and final tip is to reply to all of your reviews and including the bad ones. Um, so with the bad reviews, try to construct something a bit more formal. It might just not be thanks with a smiley face. It could just be um, something quite uh, constructive uh, that says, thank you for your review. We'll take your feedback into account. Um, please get in contact with us if we can help you further with this complaint. Uh, just be quite formal in the way that you respond to that, especially if it's a review that you can't be, it can't be taken down as customers might see and um, judge you on how you react to that certain review. So that's great. So we'll move on to the questions. Cool. Um, great. Thank you very much, Hannah. Um, cool. So, um, Obviously, we're now moving on to the questions. If you do have any questions, please uh, do pop them in the question and answers box and we can um, go through them. Uh, perhaps just, I know you've obviously touched a little bit around um, negative reviews and responding to them. I guess there's there's questions around if, if, for instance, a couple of negative reviews really brings down your score, what, what, what would you recommend are some of the things that you could do, apart from obviously replying to those messages, to try and get that, get, get that up a little bit again? No, that's a great question. I think that um, if it's a review that you can't get taken down um, and it's affected your score, what I'd recommend in is just trying to incentivize people more. So that might be incentivizing customers or incentivizing employees to help you get more reviews or positive reviews. Um, because if you've got more positive scores, it will sort of counterbalance it um, and start to creep up your overall rating on that platform. Um, and I guess on, I know you, again you've talked a little bit about the incentivization with like perhaps using vouchers or are there because I think we've been trying to look at it obviously from from toolkits perspective as well how we can more effectively and more efficiently get reviews people to, to review once they've had an interaction um, are there ways in which you can kind of put it into a process or or redirect people to like reviews pages how, how would you suggest that people could maybe maximize uh, getting reviews into their site? Um, I think in terms of gaining reviews, it's just to be frequent and um, clear. So if it's um, definitely put it in your process at any point, whether that's reminding people each week on a call or um, giving someone within the business the responsibility to um, remind people and keep updated with the scores that's a really great way of doing so um, and it could, could also be uh, embedded into the sort of sales process so every time that you've got a call or a sale um, to get a review from a customer cool okay any any other any other questions from anyone Okay, so it looks like you were really thorough in your presentation. Um, in case anyone does have any questions, obviously that pops up a little bit later, um, we will be sending out a follow-up email as we usually do with the recording today, um, as well as obviously any links to any future webinars and 
obviously if there's any burning questions that you have there feel free to pass pass them on to us and I can pass them to Hannah um if there aren't any other questions I'd just like to thank Hannah obviously for her uh, time today uh that's the reminder for the next webinar which is happening on the 31st of March I think in a couple of weeks time um it's about networking in the new normal um and virtual networking event tips and we've got a external person called Stuart who I don't know whether many of you have actually joined the Yorkshire powerhouse which which I did join a couple of weeks ago it's very animated and it's quite it's quite interesting so I'd recommend uh joining just to see whether uh, there are any tips if you'd like to run your own sessions or get involved uh, I put the link in the um chat but as I said we will send out a follow-up email as well with the registration link cool apart from that then if we don't have anything else uh thank you very much Hannah and uh and we will close it off there uh see you see you in a couple of weeks thank you